if you have already been subscribed to my tutorials over on Patreon, you will be familiar with the different methods of how I achieve accurate outlines for any of my artworks. In this video, I'm going to take you through the quickest and easiest method that I love to use. You will need access to a computer or laptop with internet, a printer, some transfer paper and a fine liner pen. The following steps will take your reference photo and resize it to match the exact size of your paper. Once complete, you will be able to print out the individual sheets of A4 paper and then stitch them together to form any size reference photo so that you can transfer the outlines onto your paper. This is particularly useful for artworks that are larger than A4 as most of us only have A4 size printers. For artworks that are A4 or smaller though, this is still a useful method as you will be able to size the transfer image to your exact paper size. This is my reference photo and paper that has the accurate outlines I created by using this method. The method works for any sized artworks by just using a standard A4 printer. Here is the plan of action, it may seem like a lot but don't worry, I'll break down each step for you and once you've done it a few times, the method will be very easy to remember for future artworks. Once you've watched the video and understand the process, feel free to screenshot or take a photo of the plan of action for future reference. Step 1. Make sure to measure the width and height of your paper in centimetres. My paper here for example measures 50 by 70 centimetres. Step 2. Create a copy of your reference photo and make it black and white. There are multiple ways to do this, if you use windows like I do, simply edit the image and reduce the saturation to zero. Step 3. We will go to the free website imageresizer.com to crop and resize our image. Here, you can upload your black and white reference photo. Step 4. Click on crop at the top left. Under aspect ratio, select custom. In the boxes below, enter the exact size of your paper. In this case, my paper measures 50 by 70 centimeters, so I will just type in 50 and 70 into these boxes. Adjust the crop section over the photo on the right for how you would like it, and then click crop when you're ready at the bottom left. Step 5. Click on resize at the top left. Next to locked aspect ratio, click on the drop down menu and select centimeters. Change the width and height to your paper size. Here I will use 50 by 70 again for my paper size. Once you're ready, click on resize image at the bottom left. Once the image is ready, download it and then click on this PDF icon to the bottom right of the download button. Click on choose files and select the newly downloaded image. Be sure not to select the original unresized image. Once the PDF converter has loaded, select the first drop down option PDF page size and select same as image. Then click convert at the bottom right. Once the conversion is complete, click on download. Open your files to where your PDF has saved to and open in Adobe Acrobat Reader. If you do not have this program, you can download it for free. Once your image has loaded in Adobe Acrobat Reader, select the print icon at the top right. Make sure you have your correct printer selected and then click on poster under page size and handling. You'll see the image on the right get split into A4 sections these are the individual sheets that will be printed out to make up your image. Click on the Print in Grayscale and Save Ink and Toner options. Then click on Properties at the middle top. At the bottom left of this new window, make sure print quality is set to high. This will ensure that all of the important details are printed out for you to transfer over onto your paper. Once you're ready, you can click on print at the bottom right. 
Depending on how big your artwork and therefore your reference photo is, you will print out multiple sheets of A4 images like so. Obviously, the bigger the artwork, the more A4 sheets will print. Next, we need to cut all of the white borders off. To make the process a little quicker, I bunch together sheets that have the same white border. To do this, I either use my paper cutter or just a ruler and a Stanley knife like you can see here. You may also want to use scissors or whatever else works for you. It is important to make sure that you cut these borders off neatly. Try to get it right on the line where the reference meets the white paper. And once all of those white edges have been chopped away, you may arrange the pieces like one big puzzle to make up your reference image. So the next job is to tape these pieces together. Any good tape will do, I'm simply using masking tape for mine. I like to pre-cut the masking tape to smaller squares and shapes so that just the edges are getting taped and not too much of the reference photo. Middle sections like this are especially important to tape as to keep the pieces held together but only use just enough for the very edges. This is because we want to avoid taping where we need to transfer the outlines. The aim is to create a strong enough single image while covering as little of the reference image as possible because where the tape covers we will not be able to transfer over those details. You will see here that I've cut out little triangle shapes with my tape and that's simply for the aim of covering as little as the reference image as possible while still ensuring that the individual sheets of A4 paper are attached together. Also, make sure to spend time ensuring that your A4 sheets are perfectly lined up so that your reference image is 100% correct. And here is what my 50 by 70 centimeters reference image now looks like. I've aimed to have my tape in as many areas as necessary so that when I pick up and move this around, the individual papers should stay firmly together and correctly aligned. So now you can get your paper or drawing surface and place it under this reference image, ready for transferring. You'll see how they perfectly match in size thanks to the previous steps. Next, I tape the top to keep the image lined up perfectly while still being able to access the paper underneath. Once the paper is positioned correctly and taped in place at the top, I can then take my transfer paper and place it between the reference photo and my drawing paper. The paper I'm using for my artwork is brown pastel matte board and I find that white transfer paper works really well for it. If you are using a different type of paper such as a white bristol for a graphite artwork then a black transfer paper will work best for you. I then hold my reference paper down with a ruler or something long and heavy at the top and then tape at the bottom, being sure not to apply pressure where the transfer paper is as to not transfer over any unwanted marks. I will use a 0.5 fine liner to transfer over my outlines and details. Using a light to a medium pressure, the very small size of this pen tip will ensure that the lines are thin and not oversized. This is important to capture those intricate details. Once the little section is transferred, I can carefully peel away the tape at the bottom and check how it's looking. If the lines aren't visible enough, I know to press harder or if they're too strong, I can do the rest with a lighter pressure. I always try and aim for as light of a line as possible while still being able to clearly see the lines. If you use too much of a hard pressure and your lines are very visible, they might be hard to draw over or remove, meaning that they'll probably show up in the final outcome. It's also important that your hand does not touch where the transfer paper is, so try your best to keep it lifted up. It may be a good idea to use a hand rest support, you'll see in a little bit how I use my ruler to keep my hands lifted up.
Once this bottom section is complete, I can then move away the ruler, peel away the tape to move the transfer paper up to the second section. Make sure not to drag the transfer paper on your drawing paper at any times as even this could leave some transfer marks. I make sure to fully lift it off the surface and then carefully place it back down. Once it's in place, I can then re-tape the paper at the bottom and this will hold it lined up in place. And then I'll place my ruler right under the edge where the transfer paper is and this is to try and keep it as flat as possible over the section I'm about to draw on to transfer. Do you remember me saying how sometimes I use my ruler as a hand support? Well, here's how. A support can really be handy, especially for large artworks where your arm needs to extend far from your body. So anyway, that's about it for this Acura Outlines tutorial. It may seem like a lot of work at the start, but it's a really easy method to get the hang of. Along with the grid method, it's definitely one of my go-to for producing excellent outlines for my new artworks. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If this video has helped you, please feel free to give it a thumbs up as that really does help me out and also to check out the description for any further reading and important links. Thanks again and I hope to catch you in the next one.